Hi, Michelle, and welcome to EntrepreneurCast. It's such a great pleasure to have you with us today. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you for asking me, Svetlana. So, Michelle, before we get started with the business side of things, tell us a little bit about who are you outside of your business and what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? Okay, well, I'm exactly the same person outside of my business as I am um, inside of my business. That might sound really sad to some people, but it's my life. What I do for a living is the one thing that I'm interested in, which is communication. So there is no, there's no cutoff point. There's no black and white. There's no, this is work mode. This is home mode. It all kind of just amalgamates into one. So everything that I do inside of work is about communication, about human communication and, um, and how to improve that and how to build rapport. So outside of work, you know, everything I'm doing is about communication. So if I'm watching telly, I'll be watching, you know, reality programs like Secret Life of Four Year Olds and, and uh, Big Brother and anything where you can see these kind of behavioral interactions. You know, everything that I do is, is about that. I'm just I'm completely obsessed with it. Great. So that that's basically all you do with your most of your time, right? So you just study yeah. people and study communications. That's incredible. So Michelle, I've got to I've got to tell you, Svetlana. I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is so bizarre because I recently went on holiday to Mexico, and it's the first time we've been to Mexico, and I wasn't sure whether we'd like it or not. And the memories that I have are incredible but when everyone says what's the most incredible thing that happened you know what's the best thing about mexico um, some people think i'm balmy but i literally i talk about one of the days that Stuart and i went snorkeling on the house reef and we met four caribbean reef squid that allowed us or allowed me to swim with them for ages and they communicated with me flashing all these beautiful colours over their body and over their eyelids and, and they accepted me and allowed me to swim with them and it was the most incredible thing. It was like I had first contact with aliens wow. and it's just... <laughs> literally consumes me communication just consumes me as you said uh, that that's what you do in your spare time as well as in your business so tell us a little bit about a little bit more about your business and what has inspired you to start it in the first place well i always had that entrepreneurial attitude so you know i, I launched my first business when i was in my 30s which was very very successful it was booking very high profile appointments for other organizations and we did it on a risk-free basis so we built a massive reputation we won loads of business awards uh, it was going really really well and we decided to go on a few holidays um, just to celebrate because my husband and i haven't really been on any exotic holidays and we booked a couple of holidays and we found ourselves on a diving holiday in sri lanka at uh, christmas 2004 which if you know your history uh, would place us right at near the epicenter of the boxing day tsunami um, which we were caught in and it was literally the aftermath of that tsunami um, when there's a, a, a over a hundred of us refugees sheltering in in a garden trying to help people get their lives back together that's the point the turning point in my life that's the point when human communication accelerated in my in the importance in my life that's when um, human became um, communication became more of just a passing interest suddenly i was seeing people communicate in a way that i didn't expect them to and i discovered what i call human magnificence human magnificence is what humanity is all about and what i witnessed svetlana is that when we are in a life or death situation, when we are in real adversity, what human beings do is incredible. To watch a human being put their life on the line for a complete stranger is something that sends shivers all down my spine every time I talk about it. And you can't, you can't unlearn it, you can't forget it. Once you've seen it, it's with you forever. When I came back, that's when things snowballed. So I just, 
immersed myself in learning more about human behavior more and more and more and it just it took a long time for the the penny to drop and all the pieces to fit into place but when they did i launched my own behavior profiling company i now have 26 practitioners across the uk and i help them to teach other people how to reach that magnificence within them so it's just everything to me it's my whole life that's incredible <laughs> so, so i just I, I feel so lucky you know it, it is incredible but i feel so lucky to have been given this guidance you know this um this map of my life you know when it happened it, it took a while for me to understand what was going on and why i you know why things happen the way they do but with hindsight you look back and you think I, I understand. I understand why this happened in my life. I understand why that happened. It's brought me to where I am. I've, I've never um, felt more in, in, in sync, in complete synchronization, and feel that, I sh that I'm doing what I should be doing on this planet. Mm. And and you and you're doing it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember the first time we met, and I I just remember the the, the whole flow of the communication between us and you know how responsive you were and you know it was all at ease it's not like you know sometimes you come and you meet people and and it feels awkward and and it wasn't the same so you you obviously doing what you do really well um, I think I think the key is authenticity you've got to be yourself but when you know yourself that's when you can be truly authentic when you don't know yourself, you can't be authentic. As much as you try, you can't be. So it's about that deep understanding of, of who you are. And that's what I help people to do. I help them to understand who they truly are on a subconscious level. And, and that just makes, like you said, it makes communication really easy from there on. So Michelle, um, what would you say your day-to-day day -day life looks like most of the times? Day-to-day <laughs> <laughs> -day life is, it's it's not standard i could be doing a number of things i could be getting up at the crack of, of dawn and hopping on a plane and going over to berlin to deliver a workshop i could be um getting up and and working in the office and doing some you know um, do some prep work or you know do some research or something like that i could be sitting in bed with a cup of coffee with my cats on my lap watching Frasier until about 9.30. <laughs> it all depends on what life deals with, you know, deals me on that day. There is no pattern in my life and, and that's the way I like it. I love waking up and thinking, what's today gonna bring, you know? I, don't, I used to have, I don't know if you can relate to this yet, Lana, I used to have um, an annual target and, um, and, an, and an exit plan and a three year plan and all that kind of stuff. And it was after the tsunami that I thought, do you know what? What I love more than anything is I love having something happen to me and me saying, I did not expect that. Isn't that beautiful? Our relationship, you know, who'd have thought that when Warren Cass introduced us and said, you know, you girls need, really need to talk. And then we just hit it off. Who'd have known that years later we'd be sitting here doing this? It, I love watching those relationships blossom. So, Michelle, you know, through entrepreneurial and business journey, we usually come through a lot of challenges. Uh, what would you say your greatest challenge was and how did you manage to overcome it? Oh, crikey, challenges. I've had a few. <laughs> I think one of my major challenges was being a leader and realizing that people in my organization didn't have the same ob objective as me. It's really hard because I, I'm, you know, I was the youngest company in the country to win investors in people. I put everything into Fizzbang, my previous company. I put all of that effort into building those relationships. And after the tsunami, it, there was a bit, there was a bit of a shock, because I found that people actually weren't there for me in the way that I thought they would be, mm. um, and that was really hard for me. It's not about them. I understand, you know, for them it's a job, and um, and I wanted them to be able to hold the fort while I was ill, while I was recovering, 
And I found that although they were going through the motions, they didn't have the heart in it in the way that I did. And I saw my company start to hemorrhage without me in it. I started to see things crumble when I wasn't there to, to hold it all together. And I realized that what I'd created wasn't so much a company, but more of a support structure around me. That was probably the hardest lesson I've ever learned in business. And for a long time, I stepped back um, after that and said, you know what, if I can't lead people in the way that I want to lead them and get the results that I want, then I'm not going to be a leader. And for a long time, I refused to work with anyone unless they were unless I was outsourcing someone that had their own business, if it was a, a partnership or a joint venture or something like that. For a long time, I thought I'm not going to have any employees because that relationship wasn't working for me. That was a massive, massive kick in the teeth for me. And uh, on the bright side, <laughs> yeah. what would you say was your greatest success? Do you have that success story that you could share with us? <laughs> Well, I think this, I think the successes come in overcoming anything. So I don't want it to be all dark and dismal. You know, my, my lessons about leadership and my lessons about, about communicating with my staff and my employees, as well as suppliers and clients and all that kind of stuff. It's overcoming that. It's finding solutions that become your successes. You know, so if that hadn't have happened to me, if I hadn't have asked the question, well, you know, why is my leadership not working in that sense? Why do I think one thing and they think another? The realization now that sharing values is the one thing that keeps organizations together, that's massive for me. So I think my it's really difficult to say which is your one success. I think every every step in the right direction is a step forward in success. And I haven't, I don't think I've realized the, the biggest success yet. It's a journey and I'm enjoying it. And I'm taking lots of little successes. I can go, yay, for everything <laughs> on a daily basis. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, just little yays, they, they all add up. And that's what gives you the, the overarching feeling of success. Uh, Michelle, um, just for fun, uh, I, I love asking this question. Where do you come up with your best ideas? <laughs> in the swimming pool uh, there's, there are two places all right i'm going to give you the the um the more socially acceptable <laughs> swimming pool when i'm swimming swimming lengths and i get into a routine and i can and i just visualize the water is just you know going over my hands and um, and I'm, I'm just in a really peaceful place and um, i suddenly start thinking creatively and these ideas kind of rush to me and um, and then I can't wait to get out the pool and, and write them down. I need a, a waterproof dictaphone. I think that would be a really nice Christmas present for the Atlanta if, if you haven't thought of one for me yet. Um, the second place is on the decking with a bottle of red wine and my husband and a fire pit. Um, no. That's, that's the, the second place where we come up with ideas that are going to change the world. <laughs> Michelle, you know, a lot of us, we, uh, throughout our life and entrepreneurial journey we have all these people who we look up to and who, who uh, inspire us uh, do you have any personal heroes or people that inspire you and who are they i like to be unconventional so that that doesn't really change the people that inspire me are you know um, people that have been through their own journeys so my my dad inspires me more than a lot of people my dad you know was half he's half Burmese and half English he was born in Burma but at 17 years old um, he came over to the UK and left his his family behind and you know he he stayed over here and and gave us kids the, me and my two siblings um, the very best chances in life and the sacrifice that he gave that he never talks about it and you know, and and he's a very he's a very positive person. Um, so there's, it's not like you know we're aware of this big sacrifice. But I think growing up knowing what he sacrificed for us has always given me that drive. It's always made me think, well, you can't let these opportunities go by without doing something with them. So I think the person that's inspired me the most is is my dad. There are a lot of people in business, you know, that I find inspiring as well. But yeah, my dad, my dad has to have the crown. 
I think uh, most of us, uh, our actual heroes are our parents because the same thing was for for me my mother um, you know she she traveled well she she had to because you know when when USSR broke down she had to change countries and uh, you know I wouldn't see her for years but she had to make a living being a single mom uh, try and bring me up and give me a better future you know so uh, for me my mom was a you know a hero uh, and for many people and a lot of people I've interviewed actually it's is them mom or dad or parents so yeah it's it's um it's got quite a quite a common hero <laughs> thing I think, us. I think there's a shared value between us right there Svetlana and we've never spoken about it yeah. this is the thing that I love about values but Va people's values are underneath the water you know we can't we can see behaviors they're above the water but the values of human being are under the water. And we've known each other for a few, a few years now. We've never spoken about that. Mm -hmm. And yet there is something at a fundamental level that connects us, mm -hmm. a lesson, a shared lesson. And it's that value that helps people to build rapport and say, do you know what? I don't know what it is about Svetlana, but there's just a connection. And we've just discovered one, you know, live right now. <laughs> there's a connection. There's something we have in common and, and a shared value that we both hold dear to our hearts. And it's those values that actually help you connect with people. So I'm really glad that we just discovered that one. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not leaving my mum out, by the way. My mum's my hero as well. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, Michelle, you have a lot of knowledge and experience. You've been running business for a very long time. Are you calling me old? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, what would be your top three tips and strategies uh, for any entrepreneur or business owner who's listening to us in the business and life um right my top my top tip has to be um, know yourself you've got to know yourself if you don't know yourself if you don't explore yourself and you don't measure yourself and test yourself and know yourself then you can't know what it is that you want and you can't know what it is that you can give. That's really important. So for me, the first tip is know yourself. The second thing is be authentic. So when you know who you are, don't try and hide it. Don't try and deny it, you know, just embrace it. And we all have faults. And when you love someone, you love someone because of their faults, not even despite their faults, but sometimes because of their faults. And so faults are beautiful things. And, and I think that authenticity is the most beautiful thing. You can only connect with people when you're really authentic um, on, a, on a real level, you know, so authenticity is my second tip. And I think um, there's something in Chinese art. I don't know if you've, if you've seen this, but if a, if a pot, breaks in china they have this gilding um, do you, you know what yeah, i mean yeah. <laughs> this gilding thing where they actually they they repair the crack with with leaf gold so a, a, a pot that has had many cracks is covered in this beautiful leaf gold pattern which makes it more beautiful and i think that that's a really good lesson for human beings you know don't cover up your scars don't be afraid to to show your past in everything that you do. Be who you are authentically, um, and that will help you build rapport. And I think, I don't think there are any other lessons. There are strategies, there are tips, there are, you know, there are um, so many things and pieces of advice you can give. But when you ask me what advice would I give to any entrepreneur, it is literally those two things. Know yourself so that you can understand what it is that you can give to the world and what it is that you want from the world and be authentic. Um, and when you're authentic, things just fall into place and you end up doing what you should be doing. I can't give any other advice than that. Thank you for that, Michelle. Uh, and you know, throughout your journey, uh, did you come across any resources that helped you uh, build what you built and do what you do? <laughs> do you know, I think this is, I don't know if this is a cop out, my best resource I think has been LinkedIn. 
you know, I love social media. You know, like you, I, I love connecting, I love networking and all that kind of stuff. And for me, LinkedIn has been phenomenal in terms of allowing you to build relationships really valuable relationships if it wasn't for linkedin then my partners in sweden would never have found me they found me you know through my reputation and because of what i would got on linkedin and and when they contacted me they contacted me because you know i'm one of the top recommended people on linkedin and i had a good reputation and i had a good network if i didn't have that they never would have contacted me and i wouldn't even be doing what i'm doing today with emphasize and um, so linkedin has been just the most simple and the most effective and the most profitable resource to date. Oh, that's that's really good to know because I don't use LinkedIn as much as I could. <laughs> I prefer Facebook for some reason. <laughs> I really enjoy <laughs> Facebook. Uh, I'm trying to use LinkedIn more, but I've been struggling to kind of. I, I think because you know on facebook it's more more relaxed atmosphere <laughs> and it's more kind of friendly and then with linkedin it's all super professional so yeah i think i i think that's um i'm not going to say that you, i won't say you're wrong but i did have this discussion with someone the other day and they said well you know linkedin is a professional place that's where you've got to be professional actually you still have to be authentic mm -hmm. if your way is not to be professional if it's if it's to be friendly and open and gushy and and who you are then that has to shine through and it can shine through on any social media channel whether that's linkedin twitter you know um Facebook, I don't, I don't know, whatever it is, authenticity is the key. I am authentic on LinkedIn and I will be as friendly, as bubbly. I'll use, you know, the, the little caricatures and the faces and stuff like that in the same way as I would on Facebook. So I think the key thing on LinkedIn is understanding who it is that you're connecting with and create and doing something with that connection. And there's nothing worse than people that just collect numbers and just have a bank of people that that just you know they just pitch to from once in a while it's about a meaningful connection so right from the word go when someone wants to link in with you find out about them find out what you have in common make sure that when you file them in your linkedin community that you're filing them in your brain and thinking i know how i'm going to make a recommendation for svetlana i know what it is that she wants i know what i can do for her and when the opportunity arises she's going to be front of mind so creating those relationships properly is um, is really key one of the things that i do with my workshops and my training is i show people how to understand the behavior of other people so to be able to look at someone's behavior or, or look at someone's linkedin profile and understand what behavior they are by the language they use and the things they include and the words that they use then when you write from the word go when you communicate with them you can communicate in their language and build massive rapport that is really easy to do oh is it <laughs> it's it sounds it doesn't sound very easy <laughs> i promise you it's simple it's so so simple yeah once you know the once you know the signs it's it's so simple to implement it really is michelle you know a lot of people i i talk to you uh, they say that at some point in their life they came across a book that changed their life do you have such book that changed yours i think the first book that changed my life was one by Peter Thompson. So Peter Thompson came into the company where I was working as an account manager on the telephone and um, he came and did some training. And it was the first time that I'd been exposed to professional personal development training. And he'd written a book, which I think was called Conversation, The Power of Persuasion. Um, and the reason it was breakthrough the reason it made a difference to me is because it started me on my personal development journey i still remember things from that book i'm not saying it's the greatest book on on, on earth you know i'm sure i've probably given it a five star review on amazon some point in, in in history but there's been lots of books that have been just as powerful um since but it's the one book that started me on the personal development journey and you know what i've realized and what i keep being shown time and time again is when I'm dealing with really successful focused entrepreneurs the one thing they have in common is they are constantly 
constantly developing themselves, learning, reading, you know, um, watching, taking these things into consideration. So that personal development journey for me, that that changed my entire career. That's when I went from being a telesales girl into being a budding entrepreneur. That's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, Michelle, um, I know you're an author as well. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, so uh, my book is called Phone Genius, The Art of Non-Visual Communication. And it, it's really weird because when I wrote the book, part of the reason for writing the book is because I wanted to move on. I'd, I'd been doing um, communication over the phone and showing people how to communicate over the phone with exceptional results for a long time. Um, and because behavior profiling had, had kind of taken over my life, I wanted almost to put a stake in the sand and say, you know, this is, this is phone genius. This is the work I've done up till now. And, you know, and moving forward, I'm, I'm going to be something else. Uh, but it doesn't, doesn't ever leave you. And I'm getting just as many inquiries now to go in and do phone genius workshops and training courses as I ever did. And everything that I, that happens in my life reminds me of something I wrote in that book, you know, that when I had that fantastic experience with the Caribbean reef squid, you know, it, of course, it's it's non-visual communication, it's non-verbal communication. And the lessons about non-visual communication and non-verbal communication and subconscious communication, they all tie into each other so beautifully. So I, I thought it was a stake in the sand saying, this is what I've done, but actually it's not. It's something I'm still very, very proud of. I'm just rewriting um, the book because things have changed so much in the three years that that book's been out that I, I have to rewrite it and amend a few things and bring it up to speed. But it's, I'm very proud of it. It's got 54 five-star reviews on Amazon. So chuffed with. It's got nothing less than a five-star review. And it's it's one of those things, Vietnam, when you write your book, it, you, you end up a little bit like a clucky hen, you know, you're sitting on, on a clutch of eggs. And you keep, you keep looking under your feathers saying, is it ready yet? Is it ready yet? And you keep going back to it and thinking, I've got to improve this and I've got to do that. And then in the end, it, it hatches, which is when you kind of publish it and you just you put it out there and you let it go. And that has got to be the scariest thing. When you put it out there and let it go and it's published, that's it. It's in print now. You can't, you can't take it back. You can't do anything about it. So it's a really, really scary time. So to watch it fly, <laughs> these analogies are getting stupid now, but you know, to watch it fly is, is the most fascinating thing. To see it being well received, it just makes me so proud. It means that all the blood, sweat and tears that I poured into writing that book, which I did, have actually been useful for people. And that's all I wanted from that book. So the second edition is coming out soon? The second edition is imminent. It's imminent. I spoke to a publisher the other day and they said we can get it out in three months. I said, that's not enough. I'm running out of books. <laughs> You've got to be quicker. I've literally, I've got about... I think I've got about five books left on my shelf. On Amazon, I've got, you know, a couple in store um, and that's it. And then it's gone. So literally, I've got to get my finger out. That's exciting news. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not exciting. The writing of it was never um, a pleasure for me. And that's something I don't think a lot of authors say. So I'm just being completely authentic in saying it. Writing it was, was painful for me, you know, because... Um, I'm not very high detail, you know, my my grammar is appalling, just ask my editor, she'll tell you. <laughs> you know, she, she actually stood up at my book launch in front of everyone and said her grammar is uh, colourful to say that. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny Maxwell. Just because you've got several best-selling books doesn't make you the, oh yes, it, hold on, it does make you the expert, doesn't it? <laughs> But yeah, it's uh, it was it was a quite a painful experience for me, you know, getting it right. Have I have I got enough research there? Have I got the right research? Does that make sense? Does does this read correctly? So it was it was actually quite a painful process. So yeah, I'm just being honest. It it takes a lot to write that book, you know. Uh, it takes a lot to write any book, um, and that was that was a challenge for me. But I'm I'm very pleased with the result. Michelle, you've uh, you've achieved a lot 
uh, I know you've done a lot of stuff. You've been running your business for a long time. You've been a speaker, an author, you know, now president of PSA Midlands. You know, the, I mean, there, there are so many things. But what is next for you? What's your next big goal or dream? Where are you going? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, I think. When I joined the PSA, I'd been speaking for a long while and, um, and and I hadn't really understood why the PSA could be of value to me. So when I joined the PSA just a little over, well, about 18 months ago, I think, I never knew that I would be the regional president and a fellow by now. Um, so that's all been a massive surprise and I can't wait to see where that element of my business goes. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just, I'm excited to just walk around the corner and go, whoa, I didn't expect that. You know? So I'm, I'm quite, I'm kind of chilled in terms of as long as I keep my foot on the gas. It's what I tell everyone. Keep your foot on the gas. Keep going. Even through hard times, keep your foot on the gas. And then things start to happen, you know. And um, so whatever happens, I'm, I'm going to be thrilled, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, we, we are coming to a wrapping up session so it, it's been an incredible joy speaking to you again uh, but before we say our goodbyes is there anything else you would like to add or advise to the listener today um, link in with me that's the only yeah the only thing I would say link in with me tell me if you you can still now I know LinkedIn has changed um, it keeps changing um, the way that we communicate with each other, but you can still send a personal message. So find me on LinkedIn. There's only one Michelle Mills Porter on the planet. Thank God, my husband says. <laughs> <laughs> but find me on LinkedIn and link in with me. Tell me that you've watched this and that will give me a really good excuse to accept your invitation. Um, and, you know, let's let's see who I've got on my network that can help you and, you know, and what will come of that relationship. Is there any other way people can find you, Michelle? No, I'm hiding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm always out there. Yeah, um, I'm on I'm on Facebook. I'm on yeah. I'm I'm out there speaking uh, regularly. I speak for. I'm particularly um, connected with the Great British Expos, uh, run by Alec Jones and Alison Dodd and Julie um, uh, as well. And they're phenomenal. Their shows are just the warmest, the nicest, the, the, the just the most profound um, exhibitions that, um, that I've ever been to. And I'm so thrilled to be working with them. I've been speaking with them for several years and now I'm hosting the speakers at their events. And, you know, those are lovely. Those are free. So those are great. You know, if you want to come along and meet me at one of those, then come along, come and meet the family. They do them in, in Windsor, they do them in Reading, in Swindon, in Birmingham, in Manchester, all over. So that's the, the great British Expos. Come and find us there. Fabulous. Thank you so much for making time today, Michelle. Really grateful for that. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing you in person probably next month. <laughs> Yeah, I can't wait. It will be next month and it's been a long time coming. So thank you for having me and always for you, Svietlana.